titration um, procedure and the first step is to pour 150 milliliters of dissolved white vinegar. Uh, did I say dissolved? Distilled white vinegar. <laughs> that makes more sense. I've got my uh, distilled white vinegar right here. We just happen to be out of it because uh, we go through a fair amount of vinegar in here at our house. And uh, so I'm going to open it. I'm going to pour 150 milliliters into a uh, 200 dry 250 milliliter beaker. I'm going to do this away from my computer. And the exact amount doesn't matter because that's what the uh, squiggly equal signs mean. Just means we need about 150. I've got it. And I've written A on this for acid. That's part one. Uh, and it, mine was clean and dry, so I didn't need to condition it, but you might need to. Pour 40 milliliters of the solution into a 50 milliliter beaker. I almost did the wrong beaker. That's about 40 milliliters, and I've put uh, B on this one for base. Um, it was clean and dry. Condition the pipette with vinegar. Good. So I've got my vinegar in my A column. I've got my waste uh, here. You can actually see I've been using my pipette recently, so it's not clean and dry. We would need to condition it anyway. Condition the pipette with vinegar. I'm going to squeeze it out. I'm going to suck up just a little. Get it all over. That's one. And this is my calibrated pipette. You can see it's got its lines on it. And this little line, the one that's to the side there, is sort of sucking from the top line. I know that's my two milliliter line. Two. because we will need to use our calibrated pipette. All right, that was three times. Now the solution that's in here is the same as the solution that's here. And uh, deliver 20 milliliters of vinegar using the pipette uh, to deliver two milliliter 10 times all right, so here's my 100 milliliter beaker. It just so happens to be clean and dry, but like the note says, it doesn't have to be. Um, all that matters is it has to be, um, not have any acid or base in it. It can have, have water in it. We'll rinse this with water later. All right, and so I'm gonna do this 10 times. I know where my line is. Remember my line, get off your last drop. My line is this one to the side here. It's not these other two over there. So I'm going to do that 10 times to get 20 milliliters. Different varieties of this lab use different numbers of milliliters. Some use 14 and some use 16. I'm going to use 20 this time, but you are using whatever it says in your procedure, which I have right here. And I'm getting down. Let's see that you can see this. Uh, -da. There we go. I'm getting down so I can look straight across and make sure I've lined up exactly with that line. One. Two. Three. Four. Oh, I got bubbles. Still got bubbles. Still at four. Five. Come on, bubble. There you go. Six. Seven. Eight. 
8. Ten. All right. So now I've delivered ten times two point zero zero. That's twenty milliliters of my vinegar solution. What's my next step? Ah, coming up there. There we go. My next step says measure and record the pH. Remove the cap. Blah blah blah. All right. So. Uh, before I do that, I'm just going to get that last bit there, and then I'm going to rinse it, condition my pipette with distilled water. First one I didn't do really well, so I'm going to do I did one plus three good ones. All right, so now that it's got distilled water in it, I'm going to set it down. Now I've got my acid here. I've got my pH probe. And I've got my data table. And the only thing I don't have is a pen. And I've got my backpack right here. And it has, believe it or not, a green pennant. And I'm going to switch over to my, well, let's watch this. So I'm going to turn on my pH probe. I'm going to put it into my solution. I'm going to tilt it to the side a little bit to make sure. It should make sure the bulb is in there no matter what. Just got to make sure that bulb is under the solution. The glass bulb that's in there. And you're going to write down your value. I am was about to say it's constant. Uh, here. Oh, mine almost fell over, so... I'm getting 2.44, and in your data table, show data table. So we have actual milliliters. We're going to have 0, 0.00 added because we have added none. And we get, well, now it's at 2.39. Somewhere around there, somewhere in the twos is indicating that your vinegar is, uh, that your, your pH probe and your vinegar are both good. Could be down around closer to two, could be up around three. If you're not in that range, your data can still be good. Um, just means that your pH meter, uh, pH tester may not be as calibrated as we would like. Um, but we will work with what we have. All right, there I am again. So now the directions say uh, condition with uh, the sodium carbonate solution, condition the pipette. All right, I'm going to lean my pH probe up there. I'm going to condition this. So let's see. So it's got DI water in it now. And again, this, so when I was conditioning with the DI water, or for me, tap water that was filtered tap water, I actually used quite a bit because uh, I have plenty of it. This I do not have a lot of, so I'm trying to just condition with a little tiny bit, get it all the way in there. Three times. All right, I did just spill it on myself. So, the base solution, so I am going to wipe it off my hand, wipe it off the outside of the beaker with a dish towel. Wow. And spilled it again while cleaning. All right, so I think I'm good now. I think I had a little more than 40, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so now getting back to the procedure, it says deliver two milliliters and measure and record the pH. And then it says repeat step seven, so adding two milliliters three times. Let's get my waste out of here. Let's get our uh, picture of what's going on up here. 
All right, so now, again, I'm going to use my pipette. I'm going to get it up to the two line as precisely as possible. There you go. And then I'm going to put it in. I'm going to see some bubbles forming there. And now I'm going to be using this in the sodium carbonate solution, so I'm just going to put it in there. You'll notice that when you add it, some bubbles form. Those bubbles are carbon dioxide gas. Stir it for five or ten seconds. Let it stop moving. And I'm getting 3.25. So let's see, I added two milliliters. We're going to ignore this column here. And I'll show that in just a second. 2.00. Three point two eight is my pH, and here is my data so far. So we're ignoring this actually milliliters uh, added because we added two. Our pipette is calibrated to deliver two point zero zero plus or minus point oh two from a previous lab, and I got a pH of three point two eight. All right, so that was number one. Let's see. Said so to do it three more times. And I'll do it three more times. Uh, let's see. You can see it's leaning up against this other beaker here. Two milliliters. More bubbles. Oop, my pH meter went off. Doesn't matter though. Now you're adding a base, so your pH should go up. No matter what, it may not go, it's not gonna go up very much this time. All right, what do we got? I got 3.55, so I added 2.00 more, and my total is now four, and I have 3.55 for a pH. Then I add two more, Get up to that line. There we go. More bubbles. You can see my bubbles there. Now it's two more, so it's a total of six point zero zero. Now up to 3.87, and then one more. Try not to squirt, just try to squirt it around the pH meter. Try not to squirt it on the pH meter. And if you do, just sort of dunk that portion under. Five or ten seconds, most all of the bubbling should stop. You'll have some bubbles caught at the top of the solution, maybe. But... All right. So that's 8.00 total, and now I'm at 4.39. Oh. Careful not to tip anything over here for my end and on your end as well. Let's show what our data looks like so far. So again, I've added two for a total of two. I added two more for a total of four, six, and eight. And now I'm at a pH of 4.39. Now on to the next, next instruction, which says each time you add the sodium carbonate solution to the vinegar, the pH changes by a certain amount. As you get closer to the equivalence point, you will notice the bit that bigger changes in pH occur for the same addition of sodium carbonate solution. This is your signal that you should start adding smaller volumes. Then when you get to pH of five and six, add one milliliter. So we're still at 4.39, so I'm gonna add two milliliters next time. But once I get above five, I will start adding one milliliter. And between six and 8.5, I will add 0.5 milliliters. 
and then go back to two milliliters. That's the plan. So we're still below five. So I'm going to add two more for a total of 10. Then I'm going to add it. I'm going to say, so everybody's table will be different now. Actually, this cushion <laughs> would be nice under my knees. Didn't think of that before. All right, so I'll keep writing data, but we'll go back to the experiment. There we go. All right. And two milliliters. Oop. Close to that line as possible. Squirt it in there. Get it all in there too. Touch the side if you will. That's 10 milliliters. Woohoo! Went up a lot, I guess, and then it came back down a little. You'll notice that that'll happen. It must have gotten into the sodium carbonate solution area. I'm getting 5.28. So now I'm above 5. So now I'm going to start adding 1. I'm going to go to my 1 line. So now in my table, plus one, that's going to be 11.00, and that went up quite a bit. Yep. Uh, the 6.38. Now I'm above six, so now I'm adding 0.5. Oop, went to sleep again, but I'm going to write down plus 0 0.5. That's 11.50, because it should be plus 0 0.50. Let's see what our pH reads. I only added half a milliliter. And now it's up to 6.71. So, uh, Add 0.5 again. Not getting so many bubbles anymore, huh? Now I'm at 6. Point, nope. Now it keeps going well. So now I'm at 12.00. I got 7.03. Kept going from 7.03 to Plus another 0 0.50, and so on and so on. I might really slow down. Seven point two six. Let me show you my data. So far, so good. Kind of slowed down, but let's see. So I'm gonna do another point five. Give it another little stir. Okay. 
13.50, Mine's actually going really slowly, so I'm going to go back to adding one this time. Right, because we're trying to be sensitive here. So when big jumps occur, you want to be adding small amounts. So that was 1.00. That's 14.50. That's 7.43. Yeah, 7.43. One. Plus 1.00, 15.50, Okay, so good. You can still see my data. I wasn't looking at it. These jumps are really small. And when you have really small jumps, when you add one, you can go ahead and add two, even though it doesn't line up with what the numbers say. But our idea, and we'll plot this, is that we want, we must be past the equivalence point. It's the short answer. All right, so I'm going to add two this time. See what happens. Seventeen point five zero. 7.63. All right, let's go back to our instructions. It says repeat steps. Um, oh, that's the third. So add two milliliters. All right, we're not getting the 9.5. So um, we're going to do three more times after of two more milliliters. And you'll see when we graph this that. So we were getting big jumps back here with half a milliliter. We're getting small jumps with two milliliters. So we'll add plus two, plus two, and plus two. We'll do three more measurements. And we'll never make it that high, which is fine. All right, my pH meter went to sleep again. Good, two more. I get 7.73 now, I got 19.50, 7.73, yeah. This is so slow, but two is the most we'll ever add at one time. Good procedure. Getting that meniscus straight across, mixing. Reading. And one more time. Two exactly. Twenty three point five zero and seven point eight three. Yeah, this thing's done. All right, so I'm going to set that aside. That's the end of our data collection. You have to do that two more times for three complete titration curves. So you're going to have one set of data here. You're going to make two more versions of this table or print this page two more times, however you want to do it. But I will need three of these data sets to be turned in. And you'll see in the Google Sheet where you can do that.